Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel. Having finished our discussion on cell adaptation, the focus of this video will now shift to exploring reversible and irreversible cell injury. So let's get started with the lecture. Okay. So <clears throat> having discussed in one of our previous lectures that the cell injury is the response of cell due to any lethal stressor. Okay. So this lethal stressor could either be ischemia or any other factor. But in this lecture, our main focus will be on ischemia. As we know that ischemia is the reduced blood supply to the tissue. Due to this reduced blood supply to the tissue, oxygen delivery to the tissue also decreased. Okay, so you can see clearly see the blood vessel. Due to the obstruction in the blood vessel, blood supply to the tissue has decreased. And also the delivery of oxygen to the tissue decreased. And due to this reduced oxygen supply to the tissue, tissue hypoxia occur. Okay. So we know that oxygen is the final electron acceptor in the electron transport chain, which is involved in the process of oxidative phosphorylation okay so which is involved in the process of oxidative phosphorylation due to the lack of oxygen supply this oxidative phosphorylation decreases which means that the formation of atp is also decreased if the formation of ATP reduced by 5% than the normal, then cell starts swelling up. Okay. So if if ATP formation reduced then 5%, reduced by 5% than normal, then cell starts swelling up. Okay. So question must arise in your mind why cell starts swelling? Okay, so let's understand it through the diagram. <clears throat> you know, uh, we know that this is the normal cell. This is the nucleus. These are the endoplasmic reticulum. Attached to this endoplasmic reticulum are these ribosomes. This is mitochondria. And this is the cytoplasm. Okay, whole cytosol. And this is the cell membrane. <clears throat> Due to the reduced ATP formation, we know that cell membrane has got so many transporters translocated within it and most of these transporters requires ATP for their normal functioning and of these all transporters there are sodium potassium ATPases okay and there are some calcium ATPases as well due to the lack of ATP which is the main requirement for these transporters the function of these transporters is lost okay and also due to the lack of ATP the permeability of cell membrane or cell also increases due to these two factors one is the impairment of function of sodium potassium ATPases and also increased permeability of cell sodium starts coming within the cell okay sodium starts coming within the cell we know that wherever sodium goes it takes water alongside okay so sodium also brings water alongside as well so this sodium influx alongside water causes these cells swelling okay so this is the reason behind why cell starts swelling also because of the entry of cell within the cell entry of water within the cell this water also get into the endoplasmic reticulum due to which this endoplasmic reticulum starts swelling and also you know that attached to this endoplasmic reticulum are these ribosomes starts detaching and due to the detachment of these ribosomes protein synthesis is also impaired okay so due to the endoplasmic reticulum protein synthesis is also impaired this was water also gets into the these mitochondria and there are also 
some amorphous densities are seen in these mitochondria. These amorphous densities are made up of phospholipid and calcium. Okay, so these amorphous densities are made up of phospholipid and calcium. Okay, so this calcium ATP is also impaired due to the impairment of this calcium ATP is calcium also starts coming within the cell okay so due to the influx of this calcium within the cell this calcium activates an enzyme known as phospholipase okay due to the activation of this phospholipase this phospholipase starts damaging the cell membrane okay so you can clearly see the integrity of cell membrane is now being lost okay so there is the formation of these blaps these blap formation occur okay so also these phospholipase damages the cell membrane due to which myelin figures are formed okay so these myelin figures are made up of phospholipid and calcium okay so let's summarize all those changes which occurs due to the influx of water firstly due to the influx of water cell starts soiling up this you must remember this is the first event of cell injury except for the reversible cell injury which occurs before the apoptosis in which there won't be any cell soiling there will be cell shrinkage there in that case okay so the first event the first event of reversible cell injury is cell swelling okay except for reversible cell injury which occurs before apoptosis okay so before apoptosis this cell injury which occurs there won't be any cell swelling there will be cell shrinkage in that case okay so this is the first change we observe secondly due to the influx of that water due to the influx of water this endoplasmic reticulum starts swelling and attached to, to, to these endoplasmic reticulum are ribosomes they, they also start detaching from them and also which causes the impairment in the protein synthesis okay so impairment in protein synthesis okay we know that due to the decreased oxidative phosphorylation cell starts depending upon anaerobic glycolysis okay so due to the consequences of this anaerobic glycolysis lactic acid formation also increased which is thereby causing reduced ph okay so this reduced ph then after causes the clumping or we, we can say precipitation of this fibrillar chromatin material okay so you can clearly visualize in this picture okay you can clearly visualize it in this picture so due to the increased anaerobic glycolysis lactic acid formation increases which causes reduced ph and thereby causing the precipitation of of chromatin okay this one is the third change now comes to the fourth change we know that the, there is also calcium influx in this case so this calcium activates phospholipase this phospholipase starts damaging cell membrane due to which integrity of cell membrane is also lost which causes the formation of blaps also there is also another compo component is formed which is known as myelin figures which is made up of phospholipid and calcium okay so myelin figures are formed
which are made up of phospholipid plus calcium okay so due to the soiling of mitochondria mitochondria starts forming free radicals these free radicals also starts damaging this chromatin the fibrillar structure of chromatin so thereby causing the precipitation of this chromatin okay now we are done with the reversible cell injury now our main focus will be on irreversible cell injury okay as stressor keep keeps on damaging the cell okay so due to the prolonged stressor the calcium influx is also increased due to this increased calcium influx this calcium now activates three sets of enzymes which are phospholipase okay so we have already studied that this phospholipase starts damaging the cell membrane therefore causing the formation of myelin figures and also in the mitochondria it causes the formation of these amorphous materials are amorphous bodies okay so amorphous densities are formed due to this phospholipase so myelin figures are formed these myelin figures were also being formed in the reversible cell injury but in the irreversible cell injury these myelin figures are larger one okay so must remember you must remember these are larger also there is the formation of amorphous densities amorphous densities in mitochondria which are also larger in this case now this calcium also activates another group of enzyme which is known as proteases this protease is starts cellular protein which then after causes cause, causes the loss of framework of cell okay so architecture of cell is now lost because of this because of this activation of proteases architecture is lost now we must there is most important point coming up okay so this calcium now activates a group of enzyme known as nucleases okay so due to the activation of this nucleases this nucleases starts damaging this chromatin okay so this damage occurs in three processes let's talk let's discuss about these all three processes which are first firstly it, it is the pycnosis okay so this nucleus is starts first first starts clumping the chromatin material okay so this chromatin material clumping occur firstly which is known as pycnosis and also in the pycnosis nuclear nucleus starts shrinking okay so this nucleus starts shrinking this is the first process of damage occur by nucleases second process is the karyorexis okay so firstly nucleus starts clumping you can see clearly you can visualize it this is the clumping of nucleus oh sorry chromatin material this is the clumping of chromatin material secondly there is the phenomena known as karyorexis okay karyorexis what does it occur in this karyorexis okay so this this clump the nucleus now starts getting fragmented okay so the fragmentation of this clump nucleus occur now so the fragmentation of this chromatin occurs okay and then karyolysis occur okay in the karyolysis these fragments now gets dissolved okay so dissolution of this chromatin now occur and due to which we know that chromatin is normally basophilic in nature due to the loss of this chromatin basophilia is also lost and outside cell there is the formation of nuclear dust okay so nuclear dust appears outside the cell so with this we are done with the reversible as well as irreversible cell injury so after reversible cell injury cell death cell death occur okay so after cell death the morphological changes occurs these 
morphological changes could be necrosis, apoptosis, pyroptosis, ferroptosis, and we'll discuss all these changes in the next video. So thank you for watching.